Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Today we're gonna to evaluate an integral which involves a lot of really nice tricks. I think this single integral is a great review for a lot of integration tricks. So what are we looking at today? We have the integral from zero to infinity of the arctan of three over the square root of 16 plus x squared all over the square root of 16 plus x squared. So we're gonna start by seeing this integral as a certain value of a family of integrals. And in particular, we'll set i of a, b equal to the integral from zero to infinity of the arctan of, let's see, b over the square root of a squared plus x squared all over the square root of a squared plus x squared dx. So this is a clear generalization of our integral. And in fact, let's notice that I evaluated at, let's see, three comma four is equal to our goal. But we'll actually find this value in general. And in fact, even though this seems like a two parameter integral, we'll show that it's in fact just a one parameter integral. Okay, so let's start with a substitution. And the substitution is motivated by the fact that we have the square root of a squared plus x squared. And the substitution is x equals a times tangent of theta. Let's notice that means that a squared plus x squared is equal to a squared times secant squared of theta by Pythagorean trig identity. And then dx is equal to a times secant squared theta d theta, just by taking the derivative of tangent. Okay, so that means our family of integrals a, I, A, B can be transformed into the integral of the arctan of, let's see, this will turn into B over A times secant theta. So that's what's happening inside here. Take the square root of this, we clearly get A times secant theta. And then in the denominator, we have a times secant theta. And then our dx term is a times secant squared theta d theta. And now we also need to change the bounds of integration. So let's note when x is equal to zero, theta is also equal to zero. So here we have this starting at zero, but as x approaches infinity, theta will approach pi over two. Great. And here we're parametrizing this only for positive values of a, so I won't write that down here, but let's just keep in mind we're only parametrizing this for positive values of a and b. Okay, so now we're in this situation and some simplification can occur. Let's notice that this a right here can cancel this a right here. And then this secant, which is in the denominator, can cancel this secant squared in the numerator down to just a secant in the numerator. And then we can rewrite this as the integral from zero to pi over two of secant of theta times the arctan of b over a times cosine of theta d theta. So I think it's pretty interesting here that our integral, which seems to depend on two parameters, in fact only depends on one parameter because b and a occur only in this form b over a here. So we can reparametrize this by setting t equal to b over a, and that gives us the integral from zero to pi halves of the secant of theta and then times the arc tangent of t times cosine of theta d theta. Maybe that gives us something that's a little bit easier to work with. And we might as well call this i of t. Okay, well, let's figure out a certain value of i. 
Notice that if we evaluate i at t equals zero, we get the inverse tangent of zero, but the inverse tangent of zero is zero, so we're just integrating the zero function, so this gives us zero. Okay, so that information is good to see. Let's collect that over here, and then we'll move on to the next step. Wait, 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 stop the video. Before we continue, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Besides being a major supporter of this channel, Squarespace is a service that takes the hassle out of creating a website. You don't have to be a programmer to have a beautiful, responsive, and feature-rich website. With simple drag-and-drop actions, access to the code if you need it, and domain services that get your site online quickly, Squarespace allows you to keep doing what you love while they handle all of the complicated stuff. I use Squarespace for my own website, and I found it easy to use with plenty of integrations. They even have a plugin for LaTeX. This makes including equations and mathematical diagrams a breeze. Whether you need a place to sell your wares or to show off your art, Squarespace has the tools you need to keep your website modern and easy to use. Give Squarespace a try by going to squarespace.com slash Michael Penn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using the code Michael Penn. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video that we are now returning to. So in the last board, we determined that our two parameter function, I, A, B, or our two parameter integral was actually only a one parameter integral under the substitution t equals a over b. So we have i of t is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of secant theta times arctan evaluated at t times cosine theta d theta, which means our goal is i evaluated at 3 over 4, which was our original i of 4 comma 3. Okay, so now let's take advantage of something called Feynman's trick for calculating an integral, which essentially builds a differential equation for our function i of t. So taking the derivative of i with respect to t, being careful of the chain rule, notice that we've got this t inside of the inverse tangent multiplied by cosine will give us the following expression. We'll have i prime of t will be equal to the integral from zero to pi halves. We'll have secant theta over one plus t squared times cosine squared theta and then times cosine theta d theta. So we end up with something like that. But now let's note that this cosine theta and this secant theta will cancel each other. And then I'll also multiply the numerator and the denominator by a copy of secant squared theta. And that's gonna help me build a substitution. Okay, so that leaves me with the integral from zero to pi over two. So left in the numerator, I have secant squared theta d theta. And now in the denominator, I'll have secant squared theta plus t squared. So the secant squared and the cosine squared cancel each other. And now I'm gonna be motivated by the need to simplify this secant squared theta d theta into maybe d something to make the following substitution. Let's set y equal to tangent of theta. So that tells us that dy is secant squared theta d theta. So that means those make up dy. But now I need to take care of this secant squared theta, but we can do that with a trig identity. Notice that one plus y squared is one plus tangent squared, which is secant squared. So I can take this secant squared and rewrite it as one plus y squared. So where does that leave us? We'll have the integral of, we just have dy in the numerator, and then in the denominator, we'll have one plus t squared plus y squared. And then what happens to our bounds of integration? Well, when theta is zero, y is also zero. And then as theta approaches pi over two from below, y is approaching infinity. So we're left with something like that. But now let's notice that this has a well-known antiderivative in terms of the inverse tangent function. And that becomes a little bit more apparent if we rewrite this one plus t squared as the square root of one plus t squared quantity squared. 
So this antiderivative is one over the square root of one plus t squared. And then we'll have the arctan of y over the square root of one plus t squared. So like I said, that's a well-known antiderivative. And then we need to take this and evaluate it at y equals zero, and then as y tends towards infinity. So arctan of zero is zero, so the lower bound doesn't give us anything, but the inverse tangent tends to pi over two as its argument tends to infinity, so the upper bound gives us a pi over two, which tells us that here we have pi over two times one over the square root of one plus t squared. Okay, so putting this all together, we have i prime of t is equal to this function of t together with our initial condition. So we've just built a differential equation for our function i, which is part of our goal integral. So now let's solve that differential equation. So this is where we ended on the last board. We had i prime was pi over two times one over the square root of one plus t squared, and then i evaluated at zero was zero. Okay, so let's note that that means that i of t will be equal to the antiderivative of this function here. So I'll bring the pi over two out front and then I'll have dt over the square root of one plus t squared. And then of course, after taking the antiderivative, we'll have to fiddle with the constant of integration to make sure we establish this initial condition. Okay, so now how can we calculate this? I think perhaps our best strategy is to do another trigonometric substitution. So in this case, let's set t equal to the tangent of alpha. That makes dt equal secant squared of alpha d alpha. I've kind of already used theta, that's why I'm using alpha. So let's see, that's gonna simplify this into pi over two, then we'll have the antiderivative. We have a secant squared alpha in the numerator, and then in the denominator, we have a secant of alpha just by trig identities. So we've just got secant of alpha that we're taking the antiderivative of. But let's recall that that has a known antiderivative of the natural log of the absolute value of the secant of alpha plus the tangent of alpha plus some constant. But now we know the secant of alpha is equal to t, sorry, is equal to the square root of t squared plus one by trig identities, and we know the tangent of alpha is equal to t. So we're left with something like that. And then notice if we set t equal to zero, we get the natural log of one, which is zero. So that means we don't need this constant of integration. And this is our closed form for i of t. So let's bring that down. i of t is pi over two times the natural log of t plus the square root of t squared plus one. Which means we could write down a general formula for this two parameter integral just by setting t equal to b over a. I'll let you do that if you want to, but I'll specialize to our case, which is t equals to three quarters. So let's notice that i of three over four is equal to pi over two times the natural log of three over four plus the square root of three over four squared is nine over 16 plus one. But let's notice that one is 16 over 16, nine plus 16 is 25. So taking the square root, we get five over four plus three over four is eight over four, which is two. So in the end, we have pi over two times the natural log of two. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.